Hey everyone, today I want to make a video explaining the basic principles of modern radio. As seen in the title of the video, I am referring to the concept of superheterodyne or superhet radio. First invented sometime around World War I and somewhat contentiously attributed to either Edwin Armstrong in the US or Lucien Levi in France, this has been a staple of just about every radio receiver and most transmitters made since the 1930s when the concept really started to take off. So what does superheterodyne actually mean? Well, the root word heterodyne refers to the new frequencies created by the interference or beat of two signals against each other. And super is affixed to imply that these frequencies are above human audible range, as in supersonic. Now that you know the definition of the word, let's take a moment to explore what this actually means. Heterodyning, also known as frequency mixing, or just mixing, is really just multiplication, or slightly more mathematically put, it is the operation of multiplying two different time-varying values, which are in this case sinusoidal signals. If you do the math, assuming F1 is greater than F2, you get the following. Or in simpler terms, the product of your two frequencies becomes two new frequencies equal to their sum and difference. You may know this as the trigonometric product to sum identity, but even if you are not familiar with this, the equation can be proven with relative ease by just making a use of, you know, a little black magic, I mean, Euler's identity and algebra. Alternatively, a very intuitive explanation exists if you're familiar with the idea of convolution. If you are, then the following will explain this phenomenon very simply. If not, don't sweat it. We're almost done with the math. First, remember that convolution in the frequency domain is equivalent to multiplication in the time domain and vice versa. Now, consider a pair of impulses about the zero axis in the frequency domain. You'll remember that this is equal to a sinusoid in the time domain. Next, recalling one of the principal properties of convolution, convolving a signal with an impulse simply shifts your signal to the location of that impulse. So now, imagine that you take two impulses at a higher frequency and convolve them with the first signal. This will result in four total impulses centered about the higher frequency. And voila! You have two new signals equal to the sum and difference of your inputs. So now that we've defined the process of frequency mixing or heterodyning in both English and a little math, I can begin to explain why this is so important. I will be using block diagrams and GNU radio to help me with this, so it's important that you understand some of the symbols I will be using. Visually, engineers represent frequency mixing with the following diagram. I will also be frequently making use of filters, which essentially help emphasize or reject certain frequencies, like bass and treble knobs on your stereo. Speaking very loosely, a low pass has similar behavior to your bass knob, a high pass is akin to treble, and band pass is your mids. And with that out of the way, let's connect this jargon to something a bit more tangible. Here, I've made a basic frequency mixer in GNU Radio. On the left side, we have our two desired signals to mix. On the right, we've got some plotting blocks. And in the middle is our mixing or heterodyning operation which is done with a simple multiplication block. Let's go ahead and run this. Here we have volume control. Then we have our frequency, inputs for frequency A and B, then our plots. You can see our two input signals here the output of the multiplication or the mixing block, an FFT or spectrum of the frequencies produced by mixing, and lastly, a small label here at the bottom calculating the generated frequencies. Right away, you can see that the output amplitude follows the input A, which you can see as I increase A. See how this changes and follows along.
The same goes for signal B. Note that you can see the frequencies moving around in the spectrum below. Now observe what happens as I increase frequency A. The gap in between our new tones widens as the sum and difference grows larger. Now that you see what this looks like, imagine you have a signal at 5 kHz, but need it to be at 1 kHz. Well, if we increase A to 4000 Hz, the difference will be exactly 1 kHz. So let's go ahead and do that. And look at that. Now we can see our difference signal is at exactly 1000 Hz. And this is the exact phenomenon that almost every radio made since the 1930s exploits to bring music and faraway voices to your ears. Imagine that the high frequency here is a radio station that you want to tune. Previously to Super Hat radios, you would have had to carefully adjust a dozen knobs and filters to bring in that specific frequency, but now you can simply tune just a single oscillator to receive your desired station. As a consequence, this also makes the design and construction of radios much easier and smaller, since we can now have what is called an IF, or intermediate frequency, meaning that the majority of componentry for receiving signals can be designed to function at one specific frequency, like 1 kHz in our example here. And the user, by tuning the dial, simply downmixes the desired station into that IF where it is then processed and demodulated for your listening pleasure. Here is a basic block diagram for a simple radio receiver that you could find anywhere, like your car or stereo at home. You start right at the antenna that picks up your stations, then go into an RF amplifier and tuning section, which are just fancy words for boosting and filtering your signal. Then you have the mixer and local oscillator we just discussed, followed by more filtering, amplification, demodulation, which is what extracts your music or voice from the radio frequency, and then lastly, a speaker output. I've gone ahead and created a simple but comprehensive radio receiver here that is a fair representation of how modern radio works. This particular design can receive AM and SSB signals. For simplicity, we will be using pre-recorded radio signals that I captured here coming from the local airport at 132 to 134 MHz. So you can ignore everything to the left of this ad block, as that would not be part of a normal radio. You can consider this ad block to be the antenna or RF input point for your receiver. Continuing on, you see how this design mirrors the basic one I showed earlier. We start with a mixer, and then an IF bandpass filter. Then we hit more IF filters and three separate demodulators, one for AM, one for upper sideband, and one for lower sideband. Next, we hit a switch, a capacitor to block DC signals, automatic gain control, basically an audio amplifier, and lastly, a speaker output. So let's go ahead and run this. There's a lot going on here, but it's all very straightforward. First, you have a selector for the kind of signal you are trying to receive. Next, you have a volume control. Then, you have adjustments for the low and high cutoff frequencies for the AM and SSB IF filters. Next item is your tuning dial with a small label below that shows the frequency for the local oscillator used to receive the signal on the dial. And lastly, you have the plots. Going from left to right, 
top to bottom, we have the spectrum for the audio coming out of the speaker, the filtered IF mix, the RF spectrum at the antenna, and lastly, the IF down mix prior to filtering. So it's worth noting now that for the IF in this particular receiver, we have selected 100 kilohertz. And you can see this here, uh, as our spectrum is centered around 100 kilohertz. So, let's take a look at what signals we have on the air here in our little RF spectrum analyzer. Looks like we have something around 132.55 megahertz. So let's go ahead and tune that. Let's take our little tuning dial here. We're at 132.1 megahertz right now. And let's put that up to 55. So we're just going to slide this. And you'll notice that as I start sliding it, the spectrum in the IF starts to slide apart, right? That's those sums and differences that we talked about earlier. So I'm going to continue turning this dial here. And eventually, we'll see this tone pop up in our IF. And there it is. Formation Tango 175 ability 10. And now we're receiving the signal at 132.548 megahertz. Close enough to 55 that it works just fine anyway. So you can see this is the audio. This is our filtered IF. This is the raw IF. You can see that in both of these, our signal is now at 100 kilohertz instead of 132.55 megahertz. So we've successfully down converted our signal into our IF so that we can actually receive and listen to it. So now I can mess with some of these settings up here and show you how that makes a difference. So for example, I can go ahead and mess with this uh, IF high cutoff frequency. So if I increase this, You'll notice there's a bit more hiss on the audio, right? And you can see that this spectrum here got wider. That's because we're letting in more high frequencies. So if I go ahead and adjust that some more, you can hear more and more hiss. So if you go ahead and set this back down, we can see that we reduce the amount of noise coming out of our speaker. So you want to adjust this to the right level. So another trick we can do is we have different modes. So we have upper sideband and lower sideband as well. Since this is an AM signal, as you can see, it's actually symmetrical about the spectrum here. We can choose to receive just one half at a time. So upper sideband will be this upper half of the spectrum here. Like so. So let's go ahead and try it. Aha. That's pretty unintelligible, and we've got two tones in there, right? So that's the actual radio frequency, and we don't want that, so we have to adjust our tuning a little bit. So you can hear those tones going down as I tune, because I'm more precisely aligning the frequency to get these tones to be at zero, so we can't hear them anymore. And there we go. Almost inaudible. Now it's a little bit harder to understand now. But you can still hear it. So we can also adjust the low and high cutoff frequencies here, like I mentioned earlier. So you can see that here, and I can also adjust the high. And we can do the same thing, we can go to lower sideband. 
and it'll be exactly the same because it's an AM signal. And so it's exactly the same if we pick up either the lower or the upper sideband. But really, we just want to use AM. Sounds much better anyway. <laughs> so that's not the only frequency uh, that has station transmitting on it, right? As you can see, we get these little transmissions popping up here uh, all over the place. So let's see what else we have. Looks like this is at 132.65 megahertz. So let's see what's over there. Let's do 132.650. And then three Tango. more zeros, right? Thanks, Tom. The seven uh, seven eight is Tango turn to Melbourne. You want visual nine left, Roger. Expect visual runway nine right, and you can fly heading two six zero. Expect for the approach. And there we go. Two six zero for bad rat. Always keep up. Fox, you can continue descent, and maintain three thousand. Always keep up. Now you can see we've tuned one thirty two six five. Traffic one o'clock and four miles maneuvering, indicating twenty five hundred. Let's see this little guy. 133.4. Good afternoon, 3210 Delta. Out of 8 for 6, Tango. Pro, turn uh, 10 degrees left, it's going to maintain 1,500. 10 left, down to 1,500, 1 Sierra Delta. Three golf, but on your present heading, you're going to enter the Bravo airspace in about 15 miles. Turn right heading 010. Right heading 010. So let's see if we can pick up one of these weaker signals. So, I think I saw somewhere around 133.4. We had something interesting pop up here. Oh yeah, 1334. So let's see what happens. Ah, it's kind of quiet. Hard to tell what he's saying, right? Well, this is where we might be able to try using upper or lower sideband to our advantage. So let's go ahead and reset these. Right, let's try upper sideband. There we go. That was almost intelligible. Let's see what else we can pick up here at uh, 132.825. Let's go ahead and tune down there. And we can watch the IF mix slide around as we do that. 82... Ah, that's about 825, right? There we go. So we can pick up that too. And with this, you can now see how we've used this mixer here to allow us to design three separate receivers in one radio. Previously to this, this would have had to be three different radios, but now we have just one radio thanks to this mixer. So Super Heterodyne is a really beautiful technology. I hope you found this video enjoyable and uh, maybe even learned something.